Don't you think it's funny that we're all dying? That from day one, this is one of the things that we all have in common. From the day we we're born, it's just countdown to death. We don't know how much time it will take. Maybe it will be soon. Maybe it will be in decades. But every second that we spend on this earth is one second closer to the grave. We're all always hurtling towards the void and the inescapable eternal nothingness. If you think that is funny, then you will likely find this video hilarious. What we do here is go back, 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 back. I don't know if it's a modern, recent thing. I don't know if it's a thing of my generation, uh, because we were raised playing video games all the time, and so uh, we want to have objectives and rewards and, uh, you know, uh, ending levels, having a little break, having some, you know, seeing our points. Uh, but it's a thing that I've been seeing a lot lately. So, so many people uh, say stuff like, I just gotta sort a few things out in my life and then it's smooth sailing afterwards, you know? Just gotta find a new job and uh, ask my uh, significant other in marriage or, uh, you know, stuff like that, you know, just lose a little weight, uh, finish my diploma, pay off my debt, and then it's smooth sailing after that. Uh, then it's gonna be, you know, uh, things are gonna get better and, um, of course, uh, that is an extremely destructive thing uh, to to think it is this a horrible mindset it's uh, uh, it's some, some something that will drive you into uh, burnout because smooth sailing in life never happens uh, life one of the most intrinsic characteristics of life is its relentlessness and as the regretted horse ebooks uh, put it out so well Everything happens so much. Everything happens so much. I think that's a, a beautiful summary of um, life. And yeah, there's always something and it never stops and smooth sailing never happens. There's always something new that's, that comes up and after that, always something new. And that was kind of my year as was obviously all of your years, but you know, this is my channel, so I'm gonna talk a little about my year. Uh, the beginning of the year was not great. Uh, the weather outside was really cold, which is something I really do not enjoy. And I just had lost a contract with one of my biggest clients. I'm a freelancer. And those this client uh, accounted for like 80% of my revenue. And uh, my relationship was falling apart in the beginning of the in the very beginning of the year, the very first days. Uh, one of my boys called uh, Lardon uh, fell really uh, ill, and uh, he died of uh, brain cancer a few weeks later. Um, and uh, a few weeks after that, another of my boys called Fenouille uh, felt gravely ill also. He died of leukemia a few weeks later. Another one of my boys a few weeks after that called Gouda uh, felt gravely, fell uh, gravely ill also. And he, he had a, a huge flare-up of the pneumonia that he had been uh, having for a long time and he died uh, also pretty fast. This was not a great beginning of year, even of infant in the internet. Uh, like the, we all remember uh, the, that the year started with the Logan Paul uh, suicide forest uh, incident and um, you know Ugandan knuckles meme. Uh, it was it was not it was not awesome. Uh, after a solid decade sober, I started drinking again, uh, which was not a smart decision, especially budget wise. I made quite a lot of money in 2017, and I thought that I would make the same amount in 2018 and boy was I wrong and I, uh, with uh, booze amongst uh, other things, started, you know, <laughs> digging uh, quite the hole in my finances 
And um, yeah, shortly after that, uh, my, my girlfriend and I uh, decided to break up, which was a good thing. If we, it was late, if anything, uh, we had a lot in common when we met. But day after day, year after year, we grew a part of each other and we had less and less uh, in common as time went on, you know. Uh, people don't really change, but they, they kind of evolve and, and their, their personality, you know, sometimes goes one way and, and really ours went two separate ways. And um, yeah, the, the relationships slowly uh, got destroyed by, by that. And uh, so we decided to put a term uh, to it. And, uh, you know, uh, no regrets. It was the right decision. But, you know, four years, we had been together four years. That's something, that's not nothing. When we broke up, it was uh, kind of like a, a weight had been lifted. You know, and, and for a few days, I felt really good uh, because I was full of hope. I, I was like, yeah, uh, during these four years in this relationship, I've learned a lot about myself, about what I want in a relationship, or what, about what I don't want. And uh, because of all this knowledge that I've acquired, uh, my next relationship will be awesome. Uh, I'll be able to find someone that really fits me and that uh, has uh, the highest possible compatibility. I, I won't uh, make the mistake of, you know, uh, getting in a relationship with someone with uh, whose uh, compatibility with me is just okay. I, I will be a pickier next time uh, and uh, find some find someone that is really perfect uh, uh, for me or, you know, as perfect as possible. And uh, yeah, because of that, I, I, I felt uh, real good for, uh, for a few days. One of my boys, uh, Mocha, had uh, been having uh, really grave pneumonia for a while and um, and he he had been um, suffering from pulmonary consolidation which is basically his lungs uh, were becoming harder and, and harder and uh, at the end he, his lungs were like hard as rock and he was just breathing with his abdominal muscles only and it was really hard for him uh, you know, just to, to get around and I was pondering every day, should we euthanize him? He's still, uh, you know, interacting with uh, his cage mates and uh, he's still drinking and eating and uh, grooming uh, a little. So uh, it, it, it didn't really seem in a, in a lot of pain, but he seemed, you know, out of it uh, and out, out of like everything. like. It, Probably his mind was uh, not getting enough oxygen. He, he seemed to have some kind of dementia. He seemed like he was not really there, and uh, and he had like he, he, he had really trouble breathing all the time, like constantly, and it was hard just getting out of bed, just getting out of my room because I didn't want to see him like that uh, every day. And and he withered for an extraordinarily long time. He, he had been sick for since he was a little boy, since he was a child. And uh, yeah, it, it was hard seeing this really nice rat uh, who didn't didn't really have a, a, a chance at life because of that pneumonia and, and that, you know, had a hard time breathing since almost since birth. He, he was very young when he caught it. And uh, and uh, it was one of the things that day after day, uh, you know, didn't help with the with the depression that I was having uh, at the time. And um, yeah, I I turned my sadness, I guess, into into anger. I was angry at myself for, you know, uh, having lost my client, not being able to find new ones, not being able to take better care of my rats because they kept uh, being ill and I, and I blame myself for this a lot and not being able to, to, to find uh, new dates. And uh, also I, I became angry at, um, you know, women in general, uh, 
why don't they answer me when I say hello? And this is something that blows my mind. Uh, not, you know, engaging in a conversation. I always, I always found out that it was weird. It's certainly not uh, a reason for anger, but, uh, you know, I was in a, in a terrible mental state and, and, Still, when I think about it, it's it's weird uh, when you when you say hello and you don't get an answer because how how do you know how, how do you know if it was gonna if it's gonna you know it, it, after a little conversation sometime you know if it's if it can work or not but if you don't even look at the person and, and exchange, exchange a few words. Uh, so many people have probably missed the love of their life because of this. Uh, weird, unexplainable behavior. I mean, it's something that always blew my mind. And the more I age, the more I do not understand it. Uh, but after a while, um, I finally got myself a new girlfriend and uh, it, it, we, we had some great times. Uh, it, uh, it started in the late July. And uh, yeah, it's, it started pretty fast between us. We we had uh, we had some great moments, and uh, everything was was going good. Um, but I was more depressed than ever. Like it was really my mental health was uh, a absolute wreck. And um, so uh, I decided to finally go see a doctor about it. And I was immediately diagnosed with major depression disorder, which will be the subject for a, another video because it's a whole thing. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll make a video especially for that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, he started me on meds uh, immediately. And the, the issue with antidepressants is that their, uh, their effect is kind of different. Uh, depending on the person, and it's kind of unpredictable, so uh, you always have to tinker with them. It's uh, trial and error, always. And um, so, yeah, it started with um, error. And uh, the ones I started taking in the beginning were uh, not uh, awesome for me, even if they're pretty, you know, G uh, generic and uh, a lot of people uh, had great experiences with them uh, they didn't work for me and um, between between that and other stuff I, I had terrible back pain at the, uh, at the time all summer uh, in uh, June I had a, a terrible insect invasion in my house, uh, roaches and stuff, and I, I, it was so difficult to get rid of them. Every day that I got out of bed, there was there were hundreds of roaches in my house, and I live in a small apartment, so uh, yeah, that, that was that was also uh, really annoying. And um, yeah, the end of the summer was was better. Um, I had this new girl who was really, really a great woman, smart, uh, nice, uh, really cool. And um, one day towards the end of September, uh, I don't really know what happened, but uh, I, there, it was probably a, a, a mix of, you know, the antidepressants and all the booze I was drinking, and a bunch of uh, sleeping pills that I that I had taken, and uh, th that made a, a kind of a nasty cocktail in, in my brain, I guess. And I I got delirious, you know, uh, one day at the very end of September, and yeah, I, I had drunk a lot of whiskey, and I had taken a lot of sleeping pills, and. Uh, I'm not sure what I had in mind, but survival was probably not on the menu. Uh, and yeah, I became kind of delirious and and started saying the most random shit uh, at, at my, my girlfriend. And, and you know, um, I apparently ranted at her for hours about 
completely absurd uh, stuff. And uh, there were uh, uh, also apparently some insults. I, I say apparently because uh, I don't remember any of it. Uh, it just, I, the only thing I know about it is, is what she told me. And um, yeah, the next day uh, she confronted me uh, about it. She, she was quite angry. And it, it was really weird to me the way she confronted me about it because she was not angry about me for, for getting drunk or for, or for taking a lot of sleeping pills or, or whatever. Uh, but she was angry at me for the things I said in my uh, obvious uh, state of not being myself, you know. And, and she, she, she recounted me some stuff I said which didn't make sense at all. Uh, and are not things, uh, you know, it's not when sometimes, uh, you get a little tipsy and you blurt out a secret that you were not supposed to say. It was absolutely random shit. It was basically shit busting, uh, in, in rant form. And, uh, she said that some of the stuff that I said, uh, uh, you know, hurt her feelings. And it was, it was such a weird conversation. It was so bizarre. And uh, I, I tried to tell her uh, that, which was the truth. I, I told her the truth that, you know, I, I was under the, the influence of uh, dr drugs and, and alcohol. And what I say, I, I didn't mean it at all. And it was just the absolute random shit. And she shouldn't take it into account. And of course, if she wanted to be angry at me for drinking too much or taking too much uh, pills or whatever, fine. She had the right for, to to do that, but uh, and yeah, we we had we disagreed like really vehemently on that, and she thought that uh, we probably needed a, a little break because we had been, um, you know, spending all our all our time with each other for uh, weeks, and uh, she decided to go uh, spend a few days at her parents' house. And while she was away, um, all the red flags uh, about her that I had been ignoring, not about her as a person, but, you know, about her not being compatible with me. She's, she's not a bad person by any means. She's a great woman. But all, all, the, all the flags that said she's not the right one for you that I had been willfully ignoring with, with uh, a lot of effort during the, the past uh, months uh, came back to mind and, and uh, I decided to break up with her. And, uh, and after that, things became a little better. Um, uh, when we were in a relationship, I also lost one another, one of my boys, uh, Romarin, but he was really old and he went away peacefully in his sleep. So that was fine. Kind of. And, uh, and uh, yeah, after that, uh, the, the, the money problems became kind of overwhelming towards the, the end of the year. Uh, I had to ask a lot of people for help, um, and uh, I'm, I'm still, um, you know, still haven't solved all of them um, because uh, you know they keep piling up on each other. And uh, I had so many uh, plumbing issues in my bathroom, uh, so some pipes that started leaking. Uh, first it was one, then it was another. I, I don't know why, but uh, that, that was annoying too. And uh, uh, towards the end of the year, another one of my boys uh, died of an accident. Uh, Cookie uh, fell on, on his head and he had a, a, some kind of massive stroke and seizure and he died in a few minutes. Uh, that was harsh. And yeah, the... There were a lot of good moments in the year. There were a lot of good stuff, but you know, everything happened so much. And uh, I have, um, mostly because of budget issues, but uh, also because of the antidepressants that don't really jive with them, uh, you know, really <clears throat> started to slow down on, on the booze. Uh, I, I drink way less. 
than I did in the beginning of the year. And uh, the weather is not as bad as, as it was. Actually, we had a great summer and I did plenty of uh, um, walks in the sun. That was great. I love the sun. And um, yeah, in, 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 I think it was in June, uh, thanks to a friend, I got a new client that did pay in the, they don't pay quite as much as my old big client, but it's still pretty nice. And um, yeah, financially, I'm, I'm doing better now. Uh, mentally, I'm doing way better. And in general, uh, my life is, is, is pretty sweet. Uh, uh, life sucks. Like life in general, as a concept. Um, life sucks. M mine doesn't. It's not a video to rant or complain about my life. I just think that life uh, is bullshit. Some, <clears throat> a lot of the time, people ask me what is uh, the meme that I hate the most. And I always have a, a hard time answering. Sometimes I say that it's the keep calm uh, posters, which are extremely cringy uh, and which I have a really strong dislike for. But I think that the meme that I dislike the most really is life. Um, you know, life in general. Uh, because, amongst other things, but it's probably reason number one of its relentlessness. I was talking about uh, life being not like a video game earlier. Um, and also because when I was thinking about life, I was thinking that I want a, a break. I would really want a break from it. Not as, a, not as in a vacation, you know? Because a vacation doesn't shield you from illness. It doesn't shield you from accidents. It doesn't shield you from having shitty thoughts. And you still have a lot of things that you have to take care of. And you still have to, you know, take a shower every day. I mean, you don't have to, but if you don't, you know, the cons will outweigh the pros. And um, you can't. There is no way. It's not like, you know, hitting the pause button on, on a game. There is no way you can do that. I mean, you can unplug the game. You, you, there is one way out, but it's a one-way ticket and there's no coming back. Uh, so, yeah, there's no way to really have a pause. And um, some, some, some people say that, you know, being on a weekend or on a vacation is, is kind of like taking a break. But those things are often more stressful than work because vacations, you need to plan them. And, uh, you know, when you're not at your home, it's, it's always it's always hard being not at your home because, you know, at your home, you have your stuff, you have everything, you get up at the, at the time that you want and you're familiar with everything. You, if you need something, you have it on hand and, you, you know, you're familiar with the atmosphere, the noises, the smells and... When you're when you're over uh, at a at a hotel, it's 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 not nice. It doesn't feel good being in a hotel room, and uh, if you uh, are at this someone's house, it's uh, you know, even if they're really nice and, and they accommodate you as much as they can, it's still not your place, and uh, it's still their rules. Even if they're not you know really controlling people, it it it's always. Uh, and you have to see them all the time, uh, especially when you don't want to. And um, even staying at your house is, is not great for a vacation because you keep thinking about stuff that you would want to fix and, and stuff that uh, you kind of want to get rid of, but you're not sure if you should, you know? That's also a thing that, that is a constant source of stress. When should you get rid of a thing? Because there are things that you don't use often. Uh, you're not sure if you need them or not. Because when you know that a thing is like broken, 
you throw it in the trash, fine. But when it's a thing that you don't use often, but it kind of takes space, but sometimes you need it, uh, you know, or um, an old uh, shirt that is still good, but I mean, clothes don't count uh, really, but you know, so, so many things um, are, you know, there are things that uh, are not useful to you, but they have kind of a sentimental value because it, they were, because it was a gift from someone you love. And so you don't really like the thing, but you like the person who gifted it to you. And each time you see the thing, it reminds you of that person and it's, it gives you a warm feeling. And so it takes space in your house and you don't like that thing, but at the same time, it gives you good feelings. You know, you know, when you're at your house, it's still, and of course it doesn't shield you from, you know, having a headache or, uh, having uh, the sniffles, you know, or being cold or being too hot or uh, waking up in the middle of the night, uh, your neighbors making some noise. Uh, there's always something. There's always something. You can't really take a break. Life is actually like a video game, and but not just any video game. Life is like one video game in particular, and that video game is classic Tetris. Classic Tetris, you know, you can only see one piece in advance, and you have to keep playing. There's no break, there's no end of levels, there are no rewards, and there's no real uh, end when you get a thing. The, the pieces keep coming and you have to do your best uh, to make them fit even if it seems that they won't fit together and they keep and one when one hits the bottom another one starts falling and they never stop and and yeah you die that's a, a great metaphor um for for life it's it's classic tetris it's the relentlessness that makes life, in my opinion, fundamentally not enjoyable. Some people say that they enjoy life. I call bullshit on that. I don't believe it. I mean, I'm not a person who believes a lot of things in general. I am I'm a very uh, skeptical uh, <clears throat> person. But yeah, you can enjoy parts of your life, like you can love your job, or you can have a great relationship uh, with your significant other, or you can enjoy that burger that you had for lunch. But to enjoy life, like as in the concept of life, I, I don't see how that's possible. I, I, don't, I don't believe that is uh, a real thing. And yeah, yeah, I think it's... Uh, it's a thing that people say, but they, they, they don't really, you know, they don't really mean it. And there, there are th so many things that could be used to illustrate this. Um, I think a great example is uh, going to the cinema. Going to the cinema is, is a good example of this because there are so many things that can go wrong. So many things that can go wrong. When you go to the cinema, you cannot know... Uh, if you're gonna like the movie, there's no way you can know if you're gonna like the movie before you've seen it. You can try to read the critics, or uh, you can follow the advice of your friends. You know, there are ways that you can get hints or clues, but it's impossible to really know before you've seen it. So, you have to make a lot of effort, you know. You gotta plan the thing, you gotta read, uh, often you read critics or you listen to the advice of your friends, you gotta make the trip, you gotta pay for uh, the, the ticket, and then uh, you gotta ask yourself, am I hungry? Am I really hungry? Do I really want popcorn? And how much do I want? I don't want to have too little, but I don't want to have too much. And, uh, you know, that, that's always stressful, so... Uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. It's it's a whole 
big thing. And, and when you are there, uh, there's a lot of time when the room uh, is too cold. That's not nice. Uh, there's a lot of times when the sound is too loud or not loud enough. The picture is not always great. Sometimes it's a little too dim. Uh, sometimes it's a little, you know, skewed uh, towards one side and, and it's not really uh, uh, parallel. Uh, and it's 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 not great for the eyes. Sometimes there's an annoying kid behind you who's making noises or, you know, kicking your seat. Um, and the seats, by the way, are often not really comfortable. And uh, sitting in a in a cinema seat for uh, almost two hours uh, often results in, you know, ass sweat, back pain. And sometimes there are things, sometimes the seats are, are sticky or dirty. So, so many things can go wrong. So many things can go wrong. And often at least one does. Man, uh, now that I think of it, the latest time I went to the cinema, all the factors uh, seemed great for me to have a perfect experience. Uh, I went to see a movie by my favorite director, my favorite filmmaker, uh, who uh, made uh, a lot of movies that I, I and I love all of them. And I went uh, to a cinema that is not very far from my house, so uh, the trip was uh, pretty pretty chill and short. Uh, the weather was great. Um, I went with my best friend. And uh, I ate before going, so I wouldn't uh, be hungry in the cinema. And I wouldn't need to buy any popcorn and to ask myself for uh, 10 minutes if I take a small bucket or a big bucket or a medium bucket. And um, yeah, I was uh, really free at the time, so making plans was not too difficult. So... Um, Everything's uh, everything seemed uh, and also I got a I got a free ticket, so yeah, everything seemed uh, uh, you know the stars seemed aligned uh, for me to have a great experience and uh, so I met my friend there. Uh, we said hello and um, I read the, we everything seemed fine. Uh, we went inside the temperature inside the cinema was nice and I found a good seat and the movie started and the movie started great and was really captivating from the beginning and, and funny and, and awesome and um, I was thinking to myself wow this is finally a good cinema experience I usually hate going to the cinema but uh, yeah I know so many people who go there like once a week or more I don't understand how they do it and why, but this time things seemed finally good. And 10 minutes into the movie, I uh, realized that I had to pee. And um, the movie had already started. And it, yeah, it was quite captivating and, and really good. So I didn't want to miss any minutes of it. And um, I, I, I kept asking myself during the whole movie, uh, can I still hold it in or do I have to go now? Uh, and yeah, that there's always something that goes wrong. There's, there's always something that goes wrong. And, and whatever you do in life, there's always something that goes wrong. And if, if, if I'm, Thinking about the some of the best uh, um, days or nights that I've had, there's always something that goes wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm, a lot of times, uh, like I, I was having great sex, and I, I I suddenly noticed that my shoulder was hurting, and so I, I tried to you know ask the girl to to go on top, but when I laid down, I, I noticed that my shoulder was still hurting. 
there was a night uh, where I was with my friends and we had a uh, video games and barbecue party. It, it was so great. We played some great video games together. We grilled some nice meats. We had a lot of fun. Uh, and, and and yeah, it was such a great time. But I kept being bitten by mosquitoes. Like I, I, I got bit by mosquitoes like a bunch of times. And then after that, I, I, I got the, the sniffles. My, my, my nose got stuffed. And, uh, and it, uh, I, I, I had to, you know, blow it a, a fucking bunch of times. There's always something that goes wrong, even in, when, in the best of times. And when the, the very rare days when nothing goes wrong, you don't know how to deal with it. You don't know how to deal with it. There's, there's a few days when I woke up like well rested. The weather seemed great. Everything seemed to be fine. And, uh, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know how to, how to deal with that. You know, I didn't know how to react. I was asking myself, wow, this seems like a, a great day and everything seems to go well and nothing seems to go wrong. So what should I do? Should I do a lot of things to enjoy the day to the fullest? Or should I do nothing and stay in bed? Which is another way to enjoy the day to the fullest and to ensure that nothing will go wrong? Or should I just go on my day normally and do everything as usual, you know? And, and just like that, the seemingly perfect day becomes overwhelmingly stressful because you don't know how to handle it. This notion that um, you can, you know, complete a few objectives and then it's going to be smooth sailing. Uh, if you have this in your mind, get rid of it because it will drive you to burn out. It will, it will destroy you. It's, it's so toxic. Um, there is no smooth sailing, never. So that's something that you got to be prepared for. Uh, and has, uh, I wish that I knew this when I was younger. Um, and if you're young yourself, it's, it's great for you to know because, uh, it will allow you to deal with things better. Doesn't matter how you want to, um, classify the things in your head, you know, a lot of people think of things in, in terms of importance, some things are more important, some things are less important, some things are more urgent, some things are less urgent, but it's, uh, it's nice to think like that, but often it doesn't really work like that. It's like the pieces in Tetris, they're all the same size, there are four blocks, and it's one after another, and you are rare, rarely in charge uh, of deciding uh, which one will, will fall and when, and uh, often you see them at the, the last possible time. And yeah, it keeps getting faster, uh, level after level, I mean, year after year, it, it, it does keep getting faster, and when you... <laughs> when the lines pile up, you know, end game. Um, yeah. So, uh, that's not really uh, uplifting, but uh, in the long term, uh, it can do you a lot of good to keep that in mind. You know, uh, it, can be, uh, it can be a little bleak uh, to think about um, right now, but if you if you keep it in mind, you know, if you keep it in the corner of your head and, and remember that, um, it, it absolutely will help you in the long run. I, I, I believe it. So um, there, there is no end to this video. Uh, as you probably could have guessed, I didn't write it. It was all improvised. Uh, just uh, as a life, I made it up as I went along. and. <laughs> You know, just you know, try to wing it, and uh, just as just like life, it was uh, unprepared and uh, completely spontaneous, and um, just uh, like life, it's 
nothing but excuses to kill time before time kills us. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next year. Peace.